Be lifted of you. May every load be lifted of you. May every satanic imposition over your life be lifted of you. And may the Lord give you rest. First John chapter 5, verse number 16 and 17. That has been our foundational scripture to this message. All wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. So therefore, we are trying to see which sin leads to death and which sin that does not lead to death. In other translation, I believe in the Amplify, the Bible says that um, when he says a sin that leads to death, then he said extinguishing of life on earth, which means that there are sins that can cut your life short on earth. And so we have been, I believe I'm on, on the fifth series so far. And now I'm talking about submission to authority. Your mother, your father, your spiritual head. Key. Ephesians chapter number six. It's very important. Your spiritual father, your biological father. Your biological father. Your father gives you identity. And I said to you the other day, there are many people that can never live with a man. A lot of women can never live with a man because they were grown up, they grown up in a house where they never see a man loving a woman. So that when you get married, you have no example to follow. Fathers are key. It is fathers that give their daughters sexuality. It's a father that tells the daughter, you are very beautiful. It's a father that tells the daughter, you are so unique that don't allow any man to mishandle you. It's a father. It's a father that trains a, 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 a child. The father, the father, Fathers are born and, and given to us so that they can train us. It's fathers that mentors us. And I thank God for some of you women knowing that you are a single woman. But your son or your daughter is not doing bad. May the Lord bless you. Come on, give yourself a clap offering. The Bible said when John was born, John the Baptist. The Bible said that they brought the elders on the eighth day to come and find out what name they would give to John. And everybody came and said they would call him Zacharias. And the wife said the name of this boy is not Zacharias. The name of this boy is John. And the elders said there is nobody in this house called John. Call Zachariah, call John. How do you name a child after John when there is nobody in your family called John? So the Bible said they asked the father who was bump at that time. They gave him a writing table and a, and a piece of pen or a chalk. And they said, tell us what the name of the boy will be. And the Bible says he wrote on it, his name shall be called John. It was the father that gave identification to the boy. Who named you? Whose anointing is upon your life? Whose seal are you operating under? Are you a blessing or are you a cursing? 
Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, obey your parents in the Lord, because this is right for you to do. This is right. Which means that it is wrong. When you disobey your parents. That is the sin of our world. And the other day we read from the book of Malachi. When God said I will send another Elijah. In the last days. And he is the one that will turn the heart of the children to their fathers. And the heart of the daughters to their mothers. Lest I smite the earth with a curse. Now if that holds true then you will understand why children and people today are facing so much failure and premature death. Watch this. He said, this is right. Verse 2. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise. Hold your hands, the hand of your neighbor. Say, this is the first commandment. The first commandment. With a promise. Say, when you honor your mother and your father, the promise will come to pass. Come on, say amen. amen. Child of God, promises are not automatic. Promises are conditional. Conditional means you must do something for the promise to come to pass. In other words, if you are not doing or fulfilling the condition of the commandment, the promise, it doesn't matter how long you pray. It doesn't matter how long you fast. It doesn't matter where you were educated. It doesn't matter what degrees you have. I am going to show you from the word of God and in life, reality, that there are people educated with degrees coming through their years. And yet, they are failures. The first commandment with a promise. That it may be well with you. And that you may live long on the earth. That's, that's it. He said, this is the first commandment with a promise. What is the promise? So that it will go well with you on the earth. And so that you live long. In other words, when you need to be delivered, you'll be delivered. Now, it is surprising how unbelievers can fulfill this scripture. And it will be well with them. And they will live long. And how believers who think they are too intelligent than God will disobey. I was saying the other day in another church. I said today, when, when, when. You, you, you are bringing up people around you. Immediately, they stand on their feet a little bit and they can preach. They turn their back on you. They want to, they want to go and start a church. And by starting a church, they want to curse you and make you look bad so that they can go and start a church and draw people from... Where, and, and you don't understand why everything on earth, including the stars, are fighting you. So that it will be well with you. And so that you will live long. Proverbs chapter 30. Honor your mother. Honor your father. Honor them. Disregard, don't disregard them. Don't disregard your spiritual father. Or don't disregard your biological mother or father. Don't think that you were educated. Huh? You have degree. Your mother didn't go to college. And so you are better than your mother and you know better. You have a shock. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 30 verse 1. Verse 11. Let's read from verse number 11. There is a generation that cares their father. Another scripture says there is a generation or a class of people. It's a class. The class of people. So happy to see you. 
It's a class of people who curses their father. There are people who form into certain classes. They, 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 they form a clique. They, they are a certain group of people who disrespect authority. We have them everywhere. We have them on our jobs. You see two, three people who gang up together against the supervisor. You find them in church. You find them in church. You find three, four people who rises up against the voice of the spiritual authority that God has set in the church. There is a generation, a group of people, or there is a class of people that curses their father and does not bless their mother. If there is a mother sitting by you, I want you to hold the hand of that mother and say, I bless you. Mama, I bless you. I'm very far, but I'm blessing you. I don't like the way these men are doing this thing. I say, if there is a woman around you, I want you to look at them, touch their hands, and say, I'm blessing you in the name of Jesus. I'm blessing you in the name of Jesus. I'm blessing you. They curse their father. They disregard their father. They are disloyal to their father. They dishonor their father. They despise the instructions of their father. There are generations, class of people who think, the Bible says that they are wise in their own eyes. And because they are wise in their own eyes, they disregard, disrespect, they are disloyal. Every this in the book. They disregard. There are people, when you tell them to go left, they will go right. Not because they have to go right. They just want to disobey your instructions. That's it. I was telling Eugene this morning that is the blessing these young people get as they hang around me and they serve me, I keep on telling them stuff. Things I have learned over 30 years. When I was going to get married, I fell in the hands of a woman. <laughs> and for some reason, my mother didn't like her. And at that time, I was staying in the same house with my mother. And my, my, any time the girl comes to a house, my mother would drive her out. That woman, you see her like that. <laughs> she would drive the woman away. I remember very well that a, a time came when the woman was looking for me. She has to stand on a field and start whistling. <laughs> she was afraid of the woman. So I went to my pastor and I told my pastor that my, there is... My, I don't know why my mother doesn't like this girl. You know, but I want to. My pastor said, pastor said, he said, listen to your mother. So, I listened to my mother. And then, later on, Naomi came around. But guess what? No, no, don't clap. Guess what? This woman got married. When he got married, the father and the mother died the same year. The husband died after three years. After two children. Then the brother disappeared. So in her family, everybody around her dead. 
disappeared and she's left alone. And when I see her, the tears and the crying, I know she's crying because she's now looking at me and said, if maybe I would have married this man, my problem would have been solved. But guess what? Can you imagine the battle I would have been fighting with my anointing? But guess what? I was more spiritual than my mother. I was a pastor. I was more spiritual than my mother. I was a prayer warrior. I was a man of God with, with anointing and miracles. My mother didn't have it. But what my mother had was a parental authority. Oh, somebody give God a better clap off. You are going to enjoy this. I could have cursed my mother. I could have cursed my mother out. And I said, who, who, who are you going to marry the woman? And I could have cursed her and gone ahead. Despise her. You can imagine what my life would have been by this time. You see, they curse their fathers. They disrespect. They disregard. They are disloyal. They are disloyal. They turn back. Is loyal to authority. They want to do what they like. There is a generation that curses their father and does not honor their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet they are not washed from their filthiness. See, the generation that curses their mother and their father are the same generation that are pure in their own eyes. You think you are too intelligent than everybody else. God bless you. Keep on moving. Today, who are you? To tell a gentleman or a lady that the way you are going, I sense death. And they will listen to you. The reason for so much calamity in our world, all this rebellion against God and God's word, all this uh, lesbianism and gayism around the world today, multiplying by the millions right now, all over the world, is because people just want to rebel. That's all. That's all. Want to rebel. And it is sad when these things are happening in the church. And I said to him, I may not have to explain to you why I'm telling you don't go this way. I, I will not explain to you why you shouldn't go and buy a house here. I may not have to explain. I may not tell you why, but listening to me. Don't have to explain. If you are a wise son, you don't need an explanation. When your mother or your father is talking. I can tell you today that most of us who have become somebody in our families from our mother's bloodline were people that were very obedient. Some of us suffered very, we, I mean we went through all kinds of stuff. But we did not allow what we were going through to make us rebel against our father and our mother. Oh come on here somebody. I have every right. I have every right to rebel against my mother. But I know what God's word says. And I want to be blessed here on earth. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shock you from God's word. That there is a way that the moon will fight you. The earth will fight you. The sun will fight you. When it is day, you wish it is night. When it is night, you wish it is day. Your air condition becomes heater. Your heater becomes air conditioned. There is a generation. Oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their 
eyelids are lifted up. What did mommy say? Please. That a cake woman. She's depressed. That woman is depressed. Don't you see the way she does her wear? She's depressed. Don't, don't listen to her. Don't listen to her. Don't listen. If, if, if it is easy to keep a, a man, a man will be staying with her. A man will be staying with her. Don't listen. Go on with your life. Their eyelids are lifted up. Their eyes, pride, arrogance. I am somebody. I am better than my mother because I have degrees. You have borrowed knowledge. Disrespect to authority. There is respect to your man of God. This respect to God's people is only in church that you can pick your Bible and walk away. It's only in church that people can disrespect the altar and the man of God. It, we don't understand what the Bible says that for this man watch over your souls as men that must give account so that they will do it with joy and not with grief for this will not be what? profitable we don't understand that there is a way you behave in church that be, that becomes unprofitable to you i mean you are just disrespectful to authority without understanding that paul said i want you to know that the head of god of christ is God. The head of the man is Christ. And the head of the woman. That even God. Have, have a well orchestrated. Ordained flow of authority. Because it is. It is regard to authority. That produces order. And discipline. On earth. Every home where there is no authority. There is no order and discipline. Disregard. Disloyal, disrespectful. I'm angry because they stopped me from doing this. There is a generation whose teeth are a source, and their jaw teeth are as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy. From among men, there is a generation they are, they, when you hear the things coming out of their mouth, how they can tear you with their jaws, the things they will be saying about you, the things they will say about the authority figure in their life, the person that God have ordained over them, the person that God have handpicked and chosen. You, you know you didn't choose your father. You didn't. God gave you a father. You did not choose your mother. God gave you a mother. You did not choose a pastor. God gave you a pastor. Your teeth. The things they say. The horse list have two daughters. Crying. Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yeah, the four things say it is enough. <laughs> the grave, the barren womb, and the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that seeth not it is enough. <laughs> I, I, I wish I can deal with this, but let me move on. <laughs> Verse 17. The eye that mocked at his father and despised to obey his mother the ravens of the valley shall pick it out. And the young eagles shall eat it. The eye. No, let's stay there, verse 17. The eye that mocked at his father and despised his mother. 
you are talking about your biological father, your biological mother, your spiritual father for that fact, and your spiritual mother, whoever she or he is. You are talking about the authority figure in your life. You are talking about... How do you curse a hand that has blessed you? How do you curse a man that has spoken over your life? Oh my God. The thing about ravens is that ravens eat carcass. It is rather the eagles that remove the eyes. But God said, I will turn the order around. And I will rather allow what shouldn't touch you to touch you. Ravens, hear me, ravens are the most dirty bird on this earth that live on carcasses. They wait until the thing is dead. Then it will come and feed on it. But God said, this time, they will not wait for it to die. They will come and fight you. There are people and situations that will fight you. That must not stand in your face. Number three. Your eye represents your vision. It represents your foresight. It represents your dream. So that when you are disrespectful to your mother and your father, the ravens destroys your vision. When your vision is destroyed, you lose the purpose of living. Once you lose the purpose of living, you, you are also cut off from resources and provision and protection because God will only provide for you because of your purpose on earth. You don't understand why we are praying for you and there is no breakthrough, there is no answer. It's like the heavens are choked. You are making money. And yet, at the end of the day, you have nothing to show for. The eye that mocketh at his father, despise to obey. You, 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 are, you just make mockery of spiritual things. You make mockery of men of God. You make mockery of people that God has called and anointed. Wake up early and have a fresh outpouring of prayer and anointing each and every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Join one of New York's fastest growing prayer meetings, Jericho Hour, at Living Faith Ministries in Mount Vernon, New York. Start your weekend off right with the full hour of prayer and ministry each and every Saturday at 7 a.m. Supercharge your day with Jericho Hour here at Living Faith. We are commanded to win souls into the kingdom of God. How would you feel if everyone you know ends up in hell? It is your duty to help win souls for the kingdom of God. Don't wait. Make the time now. Go out into the world. Witness and win one.